Greetings travelers! So today on we're doing a tutorial for custom main menu. Uh, eventually I want to try and do tutorials for each specific section of custom main menu. But for today what we're going to cover is doing the custom GUIs. Uh, there was a person in Lumion's thread for the mod that was asking some questions about how to work it. It's really kind of complicated to just look at the code and see what's going on. So I'm going to try my best to show you how they work. Um, ultimately, the tutorial series, I want to try and do a series that's going to explain each section. Uh, ideally, I should be doing this in order, but since the one that seems to be the most common right now is the GUI, I'm going to do that first. So it's going to be kind of out of order from how things work normally. So, you know, if you're familiar with it, this is the CurseForge page to download the mod with the links to the resource loader. He suggests it, and I greatly encourage using resource loader in conjunction with custom main menu because aside from being able to do the custom images for the main menu, it does offer a lot of other features that aren't so well documented. So let me get some windows open and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So to start off, when you first load the mod and it first runs, it will create a basic GUI. Looks almost identical to your regular Minecraft window, except you'll notice the extra button over here. This is the reload. That doesn't need to stay. You can actually, that's one of the first buttons you can probably remove because he did add a function and let me just clarify at this stage this video covers version 1.6 of custom main menu for Minecraft 1.7.10 and it's using resource loader version 1.2 so if you're using an earlier version not all functions may be available and with the way that he keeps upgrading and changing it not all functions may be available for the later or they may have changed or he may have added new ones in later versions. But what you'll get after it loads, this is your initial JSON file. He stores all the menu information as a JSON and he basically recreates the menu by using his own code. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this basic menu, we're going to add one extra button that just basically adds in an extra GUI and we'll go from there. Alright, so to make this easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my menu that I created for my mod pack, Tolkien Craft, to use the examples when we update this one, including using some of the preset GUI information. Uh, so basically you're going to see sections, you're going to see the images, this is going to be stuff in this case, it's showing the main Minecraft name. Uh, if you want to do later, you know, more advanced stuff, that's also going to be where you can set some static backgrounds. Like, and at Lumion's custom main menu page, you'll see a lot of different examples of what people have done. My mod pack's actually in there too at one point. Uh, with the config examples, you can get an idea how they did it. But you know, you do the little bars that go on, or the special little tables with the, the formatted buttons. Uh, that's all stuff that will come in a later tutorial. But your different sections, that's what the images are for. Buttons are literally that. This is the section that deals with the different buttons. What they're for, you know, the first section here, this just is to kind of help you know what you're putting up there. Name it whatever you want. In this case, they make sense. It's a single player button and then there's the code for the button. Same for multiplayer, same for mods, options, the quit button, language, and his refresh button. Texts are the things that you see, like the copy right here. The mods loaded. Now in this case, this one is a general based on what you have here, for the text. Uh, he's actually updated this now, so with the Forge Mod Loader, you can actually do more specific stuff. Uh, for example, let me go down here in Mine. Uh, I have Mods, 
but now you actually can use placeholder text for the specific items. So the five mods loaded, five mods active, you can actually recreate that without having to do the whole thing with the forge and the mod loader and MCP and all that. You don't have to do all that. Uh, and then others, other is like extra stuff. Uh, in this case, the splash text that everybody's familiar to see. Uh, panorama, the background, how it spins in Minecraft, you can actually recreate that. Again, tutorials will eventually come. What we're going to do is going to do the GUIs. Uh, those typically are going to be under buttons. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the GUI code, which is simply this here. That's all it is. Uh, in the case of the custom GUIs, you come down here, there's the buttons I've made, and then here's the custom code. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, for this purposes, we're going to copy, and we're going to, well, let's, you know what, let's do a whole button. We're going to do this whole thing here. Uh, make sure that you're careful as you add buttons if it's not the last one in the section. So in other words, we're in the buttons area. If it's not the last one, that there's always the comma after the brace. If it's the last one in that section, you don't need the comma. If you don't put the comma, you're going to get a red error saying something was wrong. Check the, the uh, log. And, but that's the most common mistake is for getting that comma. So let's go over here and we're going to copy this. And actually we're going to do this. Because it's really this information here that we need. Uh, actually let's go here. This. That'll copy the entire piece of button code. We're going to go up here to the buttons on the single player. And let's see. All right, so we have mods. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a button right here above single player. So how we're going to do that is we go up here to single player. We're going to paste the code in. Now, right now, it's going to look a little weird. So if we save this now and then hit refresh, you're going to see the button over here. Now, this is using the images because I've already pre-added all the images for my mod pack into this tutorial instance just so that you can see the images rather quickly. Uh, at this stage, if you don't know how to put images in, you know, that's going to be a different tutorial. This one is more advanced because it's dealing with, dealing with GUIs. So this is not intended to teach you how to make buttons, just how to do the GUIs. So we're gonna, we are going to move this up though. Uh, single player is at 100. Okay, so that's the center. They don't have any kind of. Okay, so we're going to take this out. And we're going to leave the button. Uh, just as a side note, the image height, image width is important when you use width and height, because if you don't have that, uh, it has a tendency to cut the image. Uh, so let's see, and then we're going to use, it goes up 24, it looks like, 48 to 72 is 24. So let's go here, we're going to do minus 124. And save. Reload. All right, so the but my buttons are a little bit different size, but at least it gives you the idea. So right now, this has custom content as the GUI. So how you make that possible is if you open up, this is what the config folder for custom and menu. You'll see just the main menu. So when it talks about the conf or where it shows content, literally, if you want to keep each section of the menu pretty standard so that when they click on your custom GUIs, it looks like the main menu, just as whatever you're adding to the new GUI. I suggest just do copy, and then rename it to whatever it is. In this case, since we'd already done it, it is case sensitive. So we're gonna name it that. Now what you're gonna see, that, and, and I'll open this up so you can see. Uh, this is going to be almost identical 
to what you already have. I mean, everything, including opening the GUI for the custom, because that was already there. Alright, so once you get that saved, now what I did here is I removed the extra button. And then for the title image, I decided to just use one of the random in images for my other mod pack that I've already uploaded. So we'll save that. And when you hit refresh, and then this, you're going to see. Now this typically would be on the side. Um, I'll give you another example. We will go back here and we will take this. Uh, we'll do this one. This. Copy. Paste. Save. Oh, not open. Save. Reload. Go here. Now you're going to see my Tolkien Craft logo. Uh, although stretched out because the sizing is different than the main logo. But the point is, what you would do on here then is you could take, and basically we'll take single player and we'll call it main menu. And we're going to go main menu. And then we'll go here and we'll go custom main menu. So that basically references the original main menu. Save this, reload. So now you have extras DLC that takes it. Boom. So here you could do like a change log or or you know whatever you want to do for your extra menu. And then in this case we did this, bam. Now we're back to the main menu. That's basically all there is to the GUIs. Um, the key is here, when you name it, this has to be named the same as the one that's in that folder. So if you're going forward, whatever. Uh, but the other key is, like I said, just to make it easy on yourself, once you, you know, work on your main menu first. Once you get it set up the way you want, then you can use that as the template for each additional menu GUI that you're going to create. That's assuming, like I did, where each of my other menus in my packs are the same, except for whatever's content. So, like in my case, uh, my pack has a download, you know, has the links to download the map for it. So the extra GUI has a button that opens up a little blacked out area that has the links to click on to go get that map. Uh, that's really all there is to it. I mean, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below, and I can always put out an updated menu. But I really hope that kind of explains the process for the extra GUIs. You know, the key is to make sure you have the type open GUI that tells it what it wants to do, and then the GUI is what GUI. It's always going to be prefaced with a custom and a period, and then the name of the GUI, which is the name of the file, has to be the same case. So in this case we did capital C for content. So in the main menu here we have custom or capital C for content. That'll open up whatever. So the key to remember is that the template is literally that. It, it has a potential to be a completely different menu. I mean you could have random menus for each GUI or you can make it look uniform and when you click on the button that would take you to the new GUI it'll look nearly identical but with new buttons like I showed you where we renamed on here renamed the single player to main menu and it brought people back to the main menu GUI uh, with removing that button so you know ideally if we took the time you could have this matter of fact we'll do it real quick we'll come up here we'll put this back just to make it so that you understand what I'm saying a little clear. We'll hit refresh. So now we go. It looks identical. The button's gone now, but now you can have whatever extra buttons with extra functions and then go back. Bam, there's the button again. So completely different menus and that's all there is to it. So I hope this helps everybody understand how to use the custom GUIs a little better. And again, if you have questions, ask at Lumion's mod download page or in the comments below and you guys have a great day.